Chào tất cả mọi người đến với bà Linh Vlog Đối với thôi chứ hôm nay thì mình sẽ gọi cho một người bạn của mình ở bên Mỹ, ở bên California để hiểu thêm về cái tình hình dịch coronavirus ở bên đó Nếu mọi người có theo dõi tin tức thì bây giờ mọi người chắc cũng biết bây giờ Hoa Kỳ đã trở thành ổ dịch lớn nhất thế giới Đã có hơn 250.000 trường hợp là xác nhận là lại dương tính với coronavirus à, Đã có hơn 6.000 người tử vong à, nhưng may mắn thay là đã có khoảng 12.000 người hồi phục Còn cụ thể là ở quận hạt Santa Clara ở Thành phố San Jose của mình Thì đã có tới gần 1.000 người xác nhận là dương tính với coronavirus Và đã có 32 người tử vong ở San Jose là nơi mà mình dành 4 năm thanh xuân của mình Học tập đại học ở đó Mình có rất là nhiều bạn bè cũng như là họ hàng xa vẫn đang sinh sống ở San Jose cho nên mình khá lo lắng Nên hôm nay là mình quyết định gọi cho một người bạn của mình ở bên California Yeah, so this is Bruce um, I met him when I was in college in United States He's a fun dude So What? What? Who you talking to? To the camera, of course. Okay, are you ready? Okay, so should we start Hi. now? Well, okay. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Yu, uh, and I live in the United States in San Jose, California. Uh, I came to the United States when I was 12 years old, along with my parents and my older sister. Um, it has always been um, like a big part of my life. Uh, to be an immigrant, but also being an American. I have been working in the school system, uh, you know, helping to, to educate kids. And also right now, uh, I'm working with uh, the census. Mm. You, did you just get back from work? Do you still physically go to work every day now? I physically go into an office every day since then. It has been three weeks. Um, no traffic anywhere, which is good, but it's also a reminder that uh, it's a privilege to be able to work right now. Hopefully soon, hopefully next week, I will be able to work from home. But how, how is the situation in, in the United States right now? Is it really that bad? Um, yeah, I mean, uh, we haven't hit peak deaths yet which means that whatever social measures uh, keeping people at home uh, is gonna continue. Well, you, you are a public school teacher, so how is this affecting you, affecting your work and then your personal life as well? I, I actually, I'm a substitute teacher. It's, it's really surreal because up until the point of school closing, uh, I don't think 70, 80% of the people there took it seriously. Whoa, uh, really? Especially the kids, really? yeah. Uh, the adults maybe, like kind of, like a lot of the teachers were like, oh man, this might be a thing. But it's one thing to kind of know it up here and then feel it here, right? Like mm. there's a lag. Mm. It's kind of like the fires, you know, when, when California had those fires and they're like, oh wow, it's like, it's getting really close. But if you don't see it in front of your face, you're not scared yet. But once you see it, you're like, holy crap. But how is it affecting your personal life? In a way, I'm I'm more privileged. I'm, I'm choosing to try to see the more positive sides of things. But mm -hmm. but the worst mm -hmm. thing for me is, uh, I haven't like I haven't been able to hug my mom for more than a month now. Mm -hmm. uh, my mom is is getting close to 70 years old, and my dad is like 60 something. Uh, you know, it, it, me and my sister like have conversation almost every day of how to like try to keep them safe. It made me think, like, man, I'm not, I'm just not ready. I'm not, I'm not ready to lose my mom yet, you know, like. And then you also acknowledge certain things that, that you, you have been taking for granted. Right. Well, uh, such as being able to, like, 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 hold your mom's hand or, or, like, hugging your parents. Like, I just can't do that right now. But on, on also on, on the, the economic side, I mean, I got lucky in a way, mm -hmm. but... That's not true for the other 6 million or 10 million people who filed unemployment, right? Like, no community is, is safe in that regard. The Vietnamese community in Santa Clara County for sure is taking a hit for a fact. Like, a lot of Vietnamese businesses are restaurant businesses. And restaurant businesses specifically 
is getting decimated across the entire United States, right? Yeah. Unless you're yeah. a very large company that could survive this. Mm. Um, mm. And and w- added on the, to the fact that like Asian businesses, Asian restaurants suffer more because people are racist and they don't want to order Chinese food right. or what they perceive as Asian, right? Um, I was more aware of it because I realized <laughs> people weren't buying Chinese food, even Japanese food. You know, uh, people are avoiding. Do you see restaurants closing down in Little Saigon? Saigon? Yeah, for sure. And 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 you know another thing, nail salons. Right, no haircuts. All of that. So mainly, this community is affected even more. (laughs) Oh god. God. Yeah, I miss those foreign foreign bank one places in Little Saigon, man. What about the boba tea place? Are they closing down as well? Well, maybe the newer ones with the people who are more internet savvy, they might be able to transition a little bit to deliveries delivery thing. and yeah. things like that. Yeah. But but you got to think about it because like when you look at survival, boba is not survival. <laughs> like eating out is not survival. Right. When people lose right. income and everything, like these are the first to go. Well, you mentioned about people are being racist to Asians because they can't tell Chinese, Vietnamese, and Korean apart. Have you seen any firsthand experience of racism seeing the outbreak started in, in the U.S.? In, in the U.S. The thing about the thing about racism is that you don't have to experience something acute for it to impact your regular life, right? Right. I go out and I, I for sure feel like some people look at me weird, but the fact that I think that that might happen is already impacting my life. Uh, a clear example is like my friend was walking his dog. Uh, people look at him weird, stay away, right? Uh, when I was in the school, I mean, I heard kids talking about it, talking about their moms, like, oh yeah, anytime uh, we're we're outside, we see like a like an Asian person. She would say like, oh yeah, the Chinese, you know, we're gonna, and like literally move her away, right? Um, you know, I have kept myself indoors to avoid stuff like that. <laughs> you know, I like, I was social isolating because I'm like, yo, racism is a virus too. And uh, I don't want to catch that. <laughs> that is the illness that already inside you. You don't need to catch it. Catch it. Absolutely. And it's almost like a lot of people have it. I'm not saying that I don't have it. I'm saying a lot of people have it, but you have to realize how to treat the the symptoms and the the disease, right? One of my main concern is that how how the poor, the homeless, and the new newly migrated families are coping with this in America. You, your family were, were, is is an, a true example of a Vietnamese immigration families, and you know how hard it was for, for to 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 overcome poverty. And now a lot of people in America are going through that on top of, you know, on top of it is the coronavirus. So, so what do you see on the street? How, how are they, how are these people dealing with the, 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 the outbreak? Oh man, you know, it's been, I mean, I think like it's been a while. Uh, we've been in the United States for uh, 17 years. Um, but I can still remember the struggles, the, the, you know, còn nhớ lúc mà mới lúc mà mới mới qua Mỹ là 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 đặc biệt là khi mình kiếm việc làm nữa là, là những cái những cái chỗ những cái những cái quán mà mà những cái tiệm ăn những cái chỗ mà làm nail đặc biệt là mới qua nhiều khi nhiều người Việt mình không có không có chưa có chưa có giấy tờ đi làm hoặc là có giấy tờ rồi nhưng mà kiếm việc cũng là rất là khó thì họ phải làm những những việc như là làm cash uh, toàn bộ những cái việc đó phần lớn những cái việc đó là bây giờ là không có đi làm được mm. thì bây giờ làm sao? Mm. But I think it's also important to understand that like there are things that we could have been doing that's that are being taken place right now. San Jose City are moving some homeless people into motels and hotels, mm. right? Um, mm. 
you know, like even the, 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 the cheaper ones, right? Especially because the, the tourism industry is also taking a huge hit, right? And the government is helping to pay for it. You know, half a million Americans are homeless already, right? Why is it that half a million Americans go bankrupt every single year because they can't afford health care? Even the people with health insurance, they pay every month and then they get sick and the bill is still way too high. So they go bankrupt and they sell their business and they sell their house or whatever it is. Half a million every year right now, like before the virus. And now there's a virus and people suddenly go, man, now I know how you feel. And then however you are feeling before, now you're feeling worse. Uh, preventing the fire is better than treating the fire, right? <laughs> uh, that's like a classic thing every Vietnamese person would understand it, right? Like, like, from cái, like, hơn chữ cái, right? Right. From what right. you but right? Like, it's like, like, basic. But in the United States, uh, we have multiple systems. Sử dụng những cái, những cái tấm vải khác nhau để, để ghép lại nhau nhau. Nó có lỗ. It, they, it has holes that it doesn't cover everybody because insurance business is a business they make money car insurance life insurance uh health insurance right they make money and when they when you pay a premium every month you give them money and when you get sick and you need uh care they have to pay you back right and they lose money so they don't want to pay you back. So that's why for a long time, uh, the insurance company would say, actually, you know, you, you had this in your family history. Uh, we don't have to pay you because you violated your terms. We're not going to pay you back the premiums, though. <laughs> right? There, there's like millions of Americans who don't have health insurance, who won't buy it because it doesn't make sense for them to buy it. The, you know, the, the beauty of being in the United States and in America is that people have different opinions and people mm. can voice yeah. them. Mm. Uh, and that's, that's good. But I, I don't mean to be political is what they would say, but, but uh, we, we have leadership in the United States that do not value the voices of science and the voices of like people who are experts in these things. Right. And then president Trump has been, um, uh, denying the fact that this is important or scary or or, or 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 you know deserve a serious look are the words about a pandemic at this point no we're not at all and uh, we're we have it totally under control it's one person coming in from china and we have it under control it's uh, going to be just fine different i've always known this is a this is a real this is a pandemic. I felt it was a pandemic long before it was called a pandemic. All you had to do is look at other countries. But then he like switches back and forth. Like sometimes he's like, yeah, this is serious. And then he's like, but it's not. You know, as soon as someone says like, how has your response been? He's like, well, it's not that bad. You know, it's like, yeah, the, the, fi the, the, the fire might come over to our house soon. Yeah. And, and we should yeah. take a look at it and be careful. And then someone says, well, how are, you know, are you doing the best you can? And he's like, of course I'm doing the best I can. And the fire's not that bad. Yeah. Uh -huh. It's like whether our house is on fire or not. Is it or not? Like, just tell me already so I get the yeah. water, yeah. right? Just be straight and be consistent uh, and, and follow you know, like follow the experts. So, so what about you? Do you guys have enough masks at home? Where do you get your mask then? I have these um, like cloth masks that I had. Mm. Uh, I don't have access to the medical grade masks. I didn't think I should buy them, so I didn't buy them. But you can you still know, buy them in the supermarket or somewhere, right? I don't, right? I don't, I don't think so. I think they're sold out. Uh, oh. And a lot of the other uh, just regular household stuff would also be sold out, you know? Um, what are the regular household stuff that are sold out? Toilet roll? Toilet rolls? Yeah, I mean, I think some of it is, is, is people wanting to have some control of their lives. So people felt blindsided, okay? They felt like, what the hell? Like, yeah. is it that bad yeah. so fast, right? It wasn't so like, let's all prepare. Let's come up with a plan. Let's make sure everybody gets enough or whatever but it's like hey the fire's here now <laughs> let's get, get the toilet let's get the toilet yeah Roll. and and people are they're not gonna be logical right they're not gonna be logical in that moment they're gonna do the best things that they can do to protect themselves and their family and how do you protect against a virus right like how do you it's not an enemy you can see right you can't just get guns even though a lot of people also buy guns <laughs> 
a lot of people so stop America. calling America. Yeah, uh, because it, it helps them feel safer, right? Um, so the only thing we can do now is just act as if you already have it, um, and then it slows everything down and it allows for people to respond. It allows for like health workers, health, it allows for like government, nonprofits, whatever, like businesses to make the right decisions and then be able to move forward. Một điều mình muốn nói đó là dù bạn đồng tình hay không đồng tình với Diệu thì đây là cái nhìn của một công dân Hoa Kỳ, của một người Mỹ gốc Việt uh, chia sẻ. Cho nên nếu mọi người có ý kiến gì phản biện thì hãy vui lòng đóng góp một cách lịch sự và có tính xây dựng nhất có thể ở trong phần bình luận. Uh, Diệu cũng là một millennial, là một người trong thế hệ trẻ của Hoa Kỳ hiện tại thì mọi người có thể uh, lắng nghe cái cách trả lời của Him để mà hiểu hơn là uh, giới trẻ của Hoa Kỳ họ đang nghĩ gì về cái tình hình dịch bệnh này, họ nghĩ gì về chính quyền liên bang cũng như là chính quyền địa phương trong cái cách mà họ đối phó với cái tình hình dịch bệnh này. Mình nghĩ đây là một cái nhìn khá là thú vị và mình khá là quý diệu về xét về mặt cá nhân thì mình với diệu mình nhớ là mình với him từng có một lần cãi nhau đến tận 3 giờ sáng <cười> ngồi trước một tiệm trà sữa đã đóng cửa tranh luận một vấn về một vấn đề, đề gì đó thì có thể mình có thể nói là diệu là một người khá là passionate rất là nhiệt huyết Um, và cũng là một người có nhiều kinh nghiệm tham gia các hoạt động cộng đồng cũng như là hiểu biết về các chính sách về y tế, sức khỏe và giáo dục cho nên là mình nghĩ rằng là nói chuyện với Him thì mình có thể hiểu hơn về tình hình hiện tại ở Hoa Kỳ uh, nên mình khá là coi trọng những cái quan điểm và những cái chia sẻ của Him thì mình nghĩ là mọi người cũng có thử lắng nghe thử và để có thể hiểu được phần nào những cái gì mà những người Việt của mình ở Hoa Kỳ đang trải qua trong cái thời điểm này Những người Việt khá giả thì mình không nói nữa nhưng mà có rất nhiều người Việt ở bên Hoa Kỳ thì họ là thuộc tầng lớp là thu nhập thấp à, Cho nên đây là một cái thực tế mà chúng ta không nên lờ, lờ nó đi Mọi người hay tôn vinh những cái người thành công những người làm bác sĩ, luật sư, kỹ sư nhưng mà bên cạnh đó thì có rất là nhiều người Việt họ là uh, chủ nhà hàng, họ là bùi bàn, họ làm trong các tiệm nail uh, đôi khi họ chỉ là nhân viên thôi cho nên thu nhập của họ khá là thấp và vì cái đợt dịch này cho nên là nhiều cửa hàng đã phải đóng cửa thì nó ảnh hưởng trực tiếp đến họ um, mình khá là lo lắng bởi vì mình cũng biết là nhiều người Việt mình ở bên đó tính tình cũng rất là tằn tiện họ không có chịu mua bảo hiểm vì một phần là cái tâm lý của người châu Á là cũng ngại đi bệnh viện nữa cơ Cũng sợ bị biết là có bệnh Và một khi có bệnh ở bên đó thì chi phí rất là đắt đỏ thì Một cái điểm sáng đó là, là Hoa Kỳ cũng đã, Hoa Kỳ là một trong những nước đi đầu về công nghệ Về vaccine thì họ cũng đã thử nghiệm, tiến hành thử nghiệm vaccine rồi Và hy vọng là sớm chúng ta sẽ có sớm có vaccine Để ngăn ngừa coronavirus Và mình cầu mong Điều tốt đẹp nhất cho tất cả mọi người uh, Người Việt của mình ở đâu trên thế giới uh, Và mọi người hãy cố gắng ở nhà Và rửa tay thường xuyên Và cố gắng tập thể dục để mà tăng cường sức đề kháng nha I've been sneezing a lot That's good What? Is that a good thing? I think I'm in sideway too much And I might have some allergy Yeah, sneezing is not a It's not a symptom of the corona Đồ rồi nè. Ai nói.